kind of advice are you giving to your clients? What kind of financial advice would you give to our viewers, client or not? Because there's a lot of people who are very nervous out there for a variety of reasons right now. Hi, Brian. It's, it's great to talk to you again. Um, our advice from Janice Henderson is that it's, it's too late to panic at this point. At one point, we saw the equity markets down 30%. They've come back in the last few days, and, and now it's more like 20. But uh, it's probably too late to, to make that panic sale and get in front of things. And it's also too early to jump in. The, the, the severity of the crisis we're getting an inkling of, but the thing we really don't know is we don't know how long it's going to go, and the duration has a huge impact on valuations across bonds and stocks. And not knowing the duration, it's pretty hard to run any sort of a math model or even an intuitive guess about what things are worth. And so what we're doing now is uh, with our clients is we're taking a sort of a considered view. We're up in quality a little bit. We're raising some cash carefully because liquidity is a problem in the market. But mostly we're, we're playing a wait and see game to see when we get a better handle on what the duration of this sort of global heart attack is going to be, I think at that point we'll have a chance to go and make purchases that hopefully will fuel returns for the next 10 years. This is going to end up being an amazing buying opportunity, but we're just not uh, confident yet that you can suss out the duration. And, and absent that, it, it's pretty hard to jump in with both feet. So if it's too late to panic sell, too early to jump back in, what do our viewers do? Well, I think you want to cautiously raise cash. I think you want to make sure that you have a high-quality portfolio. You want to stay away from the companies that don't have a strong balance sheet because if this does go a little longer than expected, you know, folks are going to have a hard time staying in business if they don't have a strong balance sheet. So you want to make sure you're up in quality and that you're raising cash because you're anticipating that when we do get a, a sort of a slowing of the growth of the virus and we do get a sense of how long the the global uh, sort of house arrest will continue. At that point, you want to have uh, dry powder in, uh, in order to make good investments. And so, again, it's probably too early to, to make those aggressive investments at this point. Uh, you want to be preparing for that by going up in quality and, and raising cash. I don't know if you know this, Dick, but do we know who was behind the selling? I mean, for two weeks, the market was obviously going down in a free fall pretty much every day. But yet data I looked at showed the size of the average trade didn't seem to go up that much. It didn't appear, in other words, that mom and pop, maybe your clients, investors uh, with a couple hundred thousand or a couple million dollars in their investment funds were the ones who were selling. Who do you think was selling? And did you have to sort of convince, talk some of your clients, say, hey, be in it for the long term. Now is not the time to sell. When you look at the global retail investors heading into this corona crisis, I think the, the money was sort of coming in towards us in a pretty nice stream. And we thought there was an appetite to increase uh, risk investing. Obviously, that's all reversed through the corona uh, crisis. And folks have backed off that position and, and sort of the river of nickels instead of coming in uh, slowly is going out slowly. But we didn't see a mass selling from our clients, either institutional or retail. Uh, and, and so we were asking the same question. It wasn't visible to us, but it looked pretty, um, pretty broad. And it wasn't, we don't think, the largest institutions or the mass uh, retail population. So it's a little hard to put your finger on.